Welcome to the Divorce Workshop presented by the Family Law Facilitator, also known as FLF. The Family Law Facilitator is the self-help program for family law cases. We are a court-funded program that provides free legal assistance to people who represent themselves in court and do not have an attorney. Please keep in mind, FLF can provide assistance to both sides in a case. FLF does not give legal advice. FLF staff cannot help you strategize on your case. And nothing discussed in FLF is confidential or privileged. This workshop may seem long, but is designed to help you understand the whole process to file, serve, and successfully complete your case. If you have additional questions specific to your case, we are available after the workshop to assist you. You can go to the court website, www.sdcourt.ca.gov, click on the Family tab, then Self-Help Services, and complete a request for assistance or make an appointment for a video chat. The Department of Child Support Services is the local child support agency, also known as LCSA. It is located in every county and is a county agency that provides the public with day-to-day -day services, establishing and enforcing child support orders made by the courts. The LCSA and Department of Child Support Services, DCSS, may be used interchangeably in this presentation, on the California Courts website, or on any forms you may have received. The Department of Child Support Services is where you can get help to open a new child support case, establish parentage, find parents so they can pay child support, request medical support orders from the court, enforce child support orders, and modify child support orders. If you receive cash aid, DCSS will open a case for you. If not, you can choose whether or not you would like DCSS to help you. You can sign up to open a DCSS case at the link found here. How to start an action for divorce or legal separation. If you are married and wish to terminate your marriage or legally separate from your spouse, you must open a case in the Superior Court in the county in which you or your spouse lives. You may open a case by filing a summons, petition, and other supporting documents. You will need to have these documents served on your spouse after you file. If you want a divorce, you will request a dissolution of marriage. If you do not want to be divorced, you may get a legal separation. This means you remain legally married but are no longer financially tied to your spouse. If you want a nullity, you will request a nullity but unlike divorce or legal separation, you need specific legal grounds for a nullity. In California, dissolutions are no fault. This means that differences have arisen between you and your spouse which cannot be resolved and no one is at fault. There is a residency requirement to file for dissolution. You or your spouse must have lived in California for six months and the county for three months before you can file for dissolution. If you have not met the residency requirements, you may start with legal separation and amend to dissolution later on. If you and your spouse are working well together or your spouse does not respond, the entire process may be completed by paperwork without a court hearing. There is a six month waiting period from the date of service before your marital status can be terminated. This time is counted from the day the summons and petition are served, not the day the case is filed. This is the earliest date you can be divorced. You will not be single until six months and one day from the date of service. The case is over and you are divorced when you receive a judgment of dissolution of marriage. The judgment will have orders for fairly and equitably dividing your property and debts, for spousal support if awarded, and for child custody and support if you have minor children with your spouse. It is not uncommon for people to neglect this step and find out years later that the divorce was never finalized. You may request a judgment before the six months has expired, but you won't be divorced until the six months is up at the earliest. If you do not file for the judgment, you will not be divorced after six months. Sometimes divorces take longer than six months if it is a complicated case. Like a divorce, legal separations are no fault. 
Unlike a divorce, there is no residency requirement and no waiting period. However, even in a legal separation, any minor child needs to have resided in California for at least six months before filing the petition. At the conclusion of your case, you will receive a judgment of legal separation. The judgment will have orders to divide up your property and debts, for spousal support if appropriate, and for child custody and support if you have minor children with your spouse. However, you will not be free to remarry. If you later decide you want a divorce, you will have to file a new case for dissolution only. The person starting the case is the petitioner. The other party is the respondent. The petitioner starts the case by completing forms and filing them at the court. The respondent either agrees with the petition and does not file a response or disagrees with the petition and responds. There are four types of judgments, default, default with agreement, uncontested, and contested. The petitioner is solely responsible for completing all the forms and paying the filing fee in a true default. The respondent does not file anything and does not pay any filing fees. The final judgment must match the petition exactly. For example, if the petition requests joint custody and no spousal support, the default judgment cannot change the orders to sole custody and order spousal support. You can use this process if you both agree to the dissolution and the petition reflects what you have agreed on. For a default with an agreement, the respondent may not agree with the petition but does not file a response. Instead, the parties reach an agreement on all issues and the agreement is filed. This agreement does not have to match the petition. The respondent does not have to pay the filing fee for a response in most counties and the parties control the final resolution of their case. You can use this process if the petition was filed, but no response is filed and you can work together to reach an agreement. In an uncontested divorce, the respondent files a response and pays the filing fee. If the parties later reach an agreement on all issues and the agreement is filed, the agreement becomes the judgment. The parties control the final resolution of their case. You can use this process if you can work together to reach an agreement after the petition and response were filed. In a contested divorce, the respondent files a response and the parties do not reach an agreement. The court will set a trial date and decide all of the unresolved issues at that time. This is the process if you cannot reach an agreement. Completing the initial forms. This is the list and the form numbers for how to start your case. The D-49, Family Law Certificate of Assignment, FL-110, Summons, FL-100, Petition, FL-105, UCCJEA Declaration if you have minor children, FL-140, the Preliminary Declaration of Disclosure, the FL-150, Income and Expense Declaration, two FL-160s, one for community and one for separate, and the FL-115, Proof of Service of Summons, which will be completed by your server. After filing, a court-stamped copy of all the documents need to be served to the respondent, along with a blank response FL-120 <clears throat> and blank forms corresponding to any other forms you filed. You do not need to serve the fee waiver forms. Service of the summons and petition is very important. If it is not done correctly or the proof of service form is not filed, you will not be able to finalize your case. If the respondent lives in California, service must be done personally. This means that an adult who is not the petitioner must personally hand the papers to the respondent. The respondent does not have to sign or accept the papers. If the respondent will not take the papers, the server may drop them on the ground in front of the respondent. However, the server cannot leave them on the door, in a mailbox, or give them to another person. If you do not have a friend or family member who will serve for you, you may hire a process server or contact law enforcement. The server must complete a proof of service, which is then filed with the family business office. If respondent lives outside of California, service may be by certified mail, return receipt requested, and restricted delivery. This means the service is only valid if the respondent signs for the mail. The petitioner may not do the mailing. If you do not know where the respondent is, 
or the respondent lives outside the United States, please submit a request for FLF assistance after the workshop. If you and the respondent can reach an agreement before a response is filed, how your dissolution proceeds will depend on the degree to which you and the respondent can reach an agreement. You can submit paperwork to finalize your case as early as 31 days following service. You must file for the final judgment to finish the divorce. This is not done by the court, it is done by the parties, and it is not uncommon, as stated previously, for people to neglect this step and find out years later that their divorce was never finalized. You may request a final judgment before the six months has expired, but you won't be divorced until the six months is up. Sometimes divorces may take longer if complicated, and FLF can assist you with filing for the final judgment. Let's get started. In most cases, you have to pay a fee to file papers with the court. The filing fee to open a new family case is $435. If you cannot afford the filing fee or other court costs, you may qualify to have these fees and costs waived by the court. If you are low income and cannot afford to pay the fee to file your court papers, you can ask the court to waive your fees by completing a fee waiver. There are three ways to qualify for a fee waiver. First, if you are receiving public benefits like food stamps, CalWORKs, general assistance, SSI, Medi-Cal, SSP, Tribal TANF, IHSS, or CAPI. Second, if your household income before taxes is less than the amounts listed on Form FW001 in Item 5B. And third, if the court finds that you do not have enough income to pay for your household's basic needs and the court fees. To ask for a fee waiver, start by entering your name and address on both the FW001 and FW003. The FW001 is your request and the FW003 is the court order. Please remember that you are signing the fee waiver under penalty of perjury. You can qualify for a fee waiver if you receive one of the public benefits in number 5A. Check all of the boxes corresponding to the benefits you receive. Date, print your name and sign at the bottom, and no information is needed on page two. Alternatively, you may also qualify if your household income before taxes is less than the corresponding amount listed in item 5B. If this is the case, then answer seven, eight, and nine on page two. Please remember to date, print, and sign at the bottom of page one. If the court finds that you do not have enough income to pay for your household's basic needs, then the court may allow you to make installment payments. The court may waive some or all of your court fees. Your fee waiver order will be mailed to you. Please pay close attention to the firm terms of your fee waiver to make sure your case is not voided. If you do not qualify under 5A or 5B, you will check the boxes on page 1 at 5C and then answer all of the questions on page 2 of the fee waiver. Again, please remember to date print your name and sign at the bottom of page one. The FW003 is the order on the court fee waiver. Print your name at the top of the second page and third page. Court staff will complete the rest of this form for you. The D049 Family Law Certificate of Assignment. This form shows that you are filing at the correct courthouse based on your zip code. The top part is called the header and caption and it is the same on most of the forms. This includes your name, address, and telephone number. You can put attorney for, put pro per, SRL, or self-represented litigant. You are going to mark the box for the courthouse where you are filing, put your name as the petitioner, and your spouse's name as the respondent. If both of you live in the county, you can choose the courthouse based on your own zip code or your spouse's zip code. If only one of you lives in the county, that person's zip code determines the courthouse. There is a zip code list on the court website if you are unsure where your address falls. You will mark the zip code in the middle and the appropriate courthouse box at the bottom, and then date and sign at the bottom of the form. For the FL110 summons, you are the petitioner in this case because you are filing the paperwork and your spouse is the respondent, and that will never change. 
If you ever need to go back to court, you will always be the petitioner and your spouse will always be the respondent. This is the only form that does not have the box at the top. It is also the only form where you are going to put your spouse's name first, where it says notice to respondent, and then your name next to where it says petitioner. At the bottom of the form, include your name, address, and current phone number on number two and the court information on number one. You do not date or sign the bottom of this form. That will be done by the clerk when your case is filed. On the back of the summons, there is no information for you to fill out, but it is very important that you read and understand the standard family law restraining orders. They apply to you as soon as you file, and they apply to your spouse as soon as your spouse is served. In the FL100 petition, again, you are going to complete the caption at the top with your name, address, and telephone number, and print self-represented where the caption reads attorney for. If you do not want your residence address listed on these forms, then you can use a mailing address, but the court does need a mailing address for your file. Checkbox 1A, we are legally married. Checkbox 2A, if you meet the residency requirement, and check the box next to it if the respondent also meets the residency requirement. Check box 3A and print the date of marriage and date of separation. Then state how many years and months from the time of marriage to the time of separation. You need at least the month and the year for both the date of marriage and the date of separation, but the month, day, and year is preferred. If you have minor children from this relationship, list their information in section 4B. If you have no minor children, check box 4A. If there were minor children that were born prior to the date of marriage, also mark and answer 4E. On page two, your name and the respondent's name goes in the box at the top. And then as California is a no-fault state, you will check box 5A and number one for irreconcilable differences. For number six, for custody, these are the custody definitions. Sole physical custody with visitation orders means the child resides with one parent subject to the power of the court to order visitation for the other parent. Joint physical custody is each parent has periods of physical custody. It does not necessarily mean equal time. Sole legal custody, only one parent has the right to make decisions about the child's health, education, and welfare. Joint legal custody, both parents share in making decisions about the child's health, education, and welfare. You are mar marking the orders that you are requesting, or if you have an agreement, the orders that you agree to. In this case, you will see that the petitioner has requested joint legal custody on 6A, physical custody on 6B, and child visitation on 6C. There is nothing to mark on number seven for child support. It is important to know that you cannot waive child support as it is a right for the children, not the parents. You can, however, agree to have child support set at zero. You may be entitled to spousal support. You can ask for spousal support to be ordered to either party. You can reserve your right to wait until later to decide for either party or you can ask to terminate either or both parties' rights to ever ask for spousal support. Please note that marriage is lasting 10 or more years. Spousal support will generally not be terminated for either party. It will be reserved if you or the other party do not want to pursue spousal support orders. In this case, the petitioner has asked to terminate the court's ability to award spousal support to the respondent in 8B and ask the court in 8C to reserve for future determination as to the petitioner. If you want to request the court order spousal support for you, you would mark 8A in the petitioner box. If you don't want either party to receive spousal support under any circumstances, you would mark 8B in both the petitioner and the respondent box. Community property versus separate property. Community property includes all assets and debts you obtained between the time of marriage and up to the date of separation that did not come to you by way of gift or inheritance. It does not matter whose name the car or the house is in. It does not matter who was working when you made purchases or paid off debt. Separate property includes everything you purchased and all debts you had before the date of marriage and after the date of separation. 
gifts and inheritance given to one of the parties during the marriage is deemed that person's separate property. Quasi-community property includes any property acquired outside of California by either spouse during the marriage. On number nine for separate property, you would mark 9B, confirm as separate property the assets and debts in the property declaration. If you have no property for community property, you would check box 10A. If you have community property, check box 10B. List the community property and state who will keep the property in the box below, or list them all in a property declaration form FL-160. If you plan to proceed by default without the respondent, the best thing to do is to mark 9B and 10B, the property declaration box in both, and complete the property declarations even if you do not have assets and debts to list. If you changed your name when you got married and want to go back to your previ previous name, please check box 11B. Then print your first, middle, and last name that you would like restored. On number 12, you are stating that you have read the restraining orders on the back of the summons, and then you are going to date, print your name, and sign. When do I have to serve the preliminary declaration of disclosure on the other party? The petitioner shall serve the other party with the preliminary declaration of disclosure either at the same time as they serve the Form FL-100, Petition for Divorce or Legal Separation, or within 60 days of filing the petition. If the respondent files a response, they shall serve the petitioner with the preliminary declaration of disclosure either at the same time they serve the FL-120 response or within 60 days of filing the response. Warning, there are serious penalties for failing to disclose assets and debts. The most important thing to do is to be open and honest in listing everything of value. If you keep anything hidden, it tends to come to the surface sooner or later, and the penalties for hiding something of value are very serious. The other person could receive 100% of the assets and you could have to pay attorney's fees and also fines. Remember the goal is to split up community property so that both spouses and domestic partners end up with a roughly equal net share. This form is used for the preliminary declaration of disclosure, the FL-140. This is the cover page to your declaration of disclosure packet. This form alone does not get filed with the court. Again, you will complete the caption at the top, the same as all of the other forms, and then mark the boxes petitioners and preliminary in the middle. The case number will be assigned to you when you file, and you will see the legal requirements for disclosures in the middle section. On number one, you will mark the property declaration box, and then community and separate. You will also mark number two for a completed income and expense declaration, and if you have filed taxes either individually or jointly in the last two years, then you will also mark number three. You will then date, print your name and sign at the bottom of the form. Why do I need to disclose my assets and debts? Spouses are subject to the general rules governing fiduciary relationships that control the actions of persons occupying confidential relations with each other. This confidential relationship imposes the highest duty of good faith and fair dealings of each spouse and neither shall take any unfair advantage of the other. This confidential relationship is a fiduciary relationship subject to the same rights and duties of non-marital business partners, including but not limited to providing each spouse access at all times to any books kept regarding a transaction for the purposes of inspection and copying, rendering upon request true and full information of all things affecting any transaction that concerns the community property, and accountings to the spouse of any benefit or profit derived from any transaction by one spouse without the consent of the other spouse that are their community property. The next is the FL-150 Income and Expense Declaration. Again, the caption at the top is same as the, all of the other forms. For number one, provide your current employer's information. If you are unemployed, provide your most recent job, no matter how long ago that was. If currently employed, you are also going to attach copies of your last two months pay stubs. If you are currently unemployed, 
Please provide the date job started and the date job ended. You will see that in G, you're going to put the number of hours you work per week, and in H, how much you are paid, either per hour or per month or per week. On number two, enter your age, education level, and include any professional or vocational licenses. It is very un important on this form, as all forms, to include information in every field that applies to you. In number three, provide the last year that you filed taxes, your current filing status, whether or not you file with someone else, and if yes, include that person's name, how many exemptions you claim, and state the other person's income. If you don't know, you can write impute 40 hours at minimum wage or provide your best estimation. On 3D for the number of exemptions, this is not the number of allowances you claim for payroll. This is the number of people that you would list on page one of your tax return. So for example, if it is you and your spouse and two children, then it would be four. On number four, the reason for providing the other party's income, at least an estimation and how you know, is in the event that you are asking for child support and or spousal support. Page two, tell the court about all of your income and any deductions. On number five, if you are a wage earning employee, you are going to list any money you receive in any of those categories. And note that you need to put the last month's income as well as the average monthly income. If you are salary, those numbers would usually be the same. If you are hourly, they may vary and you may need additional assistance following the workshop to calculate your income. If you receive investment income of any type, that goes in number six. If you are not a wage earning employee and you are self-employed, then your information will go in number seven. And instead of pay stubs, you need to attach a profit and loss statement for the last two years or a Schedule C from your last federal tax return. Please be sure to black out your social security number. And if you have more than one business, provide the information for each of your businesses. Number eight is if you have received any additional income one-time money in the last 12 months. And number nine is if there has been a change in income in the last 12 months. On number 10, you are listing deductions as seen on your paycheck stubs. So do you have required union dues that are taken out, required retirement payments, required medical, dental, et cetera, and payments, or child support, spousal support that you pay for another relationship. On number 11, A is cash, checking, savings, um, basically anything you have on deposit. 11B, stocks, bonds, or other assets you could easily sell. And 11C, all of your property, real or personal, minus the debts that you owe. On page three at the top, fill out the heading and the case number. Again, if you are filing brand new case, you won't have your case number yet. Enter the information about the people who live with you at least 51% of the time in the box provided, how they are related to you, their gross monthly income, and whether they pay any of the household expenses. In number 13, enter the information about your monthly expenses. Let the court know if anybody helps you make the payments and how much they contribute. Usually you are marking the estimated expenses box as your expenses may vary. Again, provide information in every field that applies to you. On number 14, these are installment payments. For example, car payments, credit card payments, anything that you are paying a monthly amount on a balance. And pay to, for, amount, balance, and the date of your last payment. You will then add up just the monthly amount total and put that in item 13P before totaling both columns for 13R. If someone else pays some of your expenses, you would include that in 13S. You do not sign at the bottom of this form. This portion of the form is to be completed by an attorney regarding attorney's fees. If you have minor children, then complete page four, again, filling out the names and case number if you already have one. Enter how many children you have from this relationship and how much time they spend with the other parent on number 16, as that is needed to calculate child support. On number 17, 
tell the court if you are providing health insurance coverage for your children through your job and the name, address, and monthly cost. Please note, it asks, I do or do not have health insurance available to me for the children through my job. So if you do have insurance for the children, even if you are not using it, you should be marking 17A and providing that information along with the cost you are paying or would be paying if you were using the insurance. For 18, 19, and 20, enter any additional expenses for the children, including special hardships and any other information you would like the court to know. How do I figure out how to divide my assets and debts? Make a list of everything you own, everything you own and everything your spouse owns. Figure out the fair market value of each item, what it is worth today, not what you paid for it. Figure out which items are separate property and which items are community property. Determine who will keep the asset or pay the debt and whether the other side should get an equalizing payment or if one party is paying more debts, if the other party will owe money to the first person. This takes you to the property declarations. Again, you would have two, an FL-160 for community property, which would include everything owned by either spouse that was acquired during the marriage, and then another FL-160 for separate property, which is all of your assets and debts that you acquired prior to marriage, after you separated, or by gift or inheritance. This is how the caption would look for the separate property declaration. The information is all the same, except for the separate property box marked in the middle. Disclose what you own and how you plan to divide your assets and debts. You would put a brief description in column A, the date acquired in column B. If you do not have a specific date, you can put during marriage, the gross fair market value, what is it worth today, the amount of debt owing as of today, C minus D equals E, which is the net fair market value of the asset. If no debt is owing, then the gross fair market value and the net fair market value are the same. And when you get to column F, your proposal for division. Is it being awarded all to the petitioner, all to the respondent, or split in half? Keep in mind that the court wants you to show an equal distribution of all your community property assets and debts. If you are proceeding by agreement and have already decided how they will be divided by agreement, you may indicate that proposal for division. Please know, however, that your agreement will then need to match what you've listed on your property declaration. If not, then you may be required to amend, or if you don't have an agreement, proceed to trial. The proof of service of summons. Again, you will complete the caption on the form with your name, address, and telephone number. Number one, you would mark 1A that the summons and petition are being served. If you have minor children and are also completing the declaration under UCCJA, that would be item 1D1. If you are serving your disclosure documents with your summons and petition, which is the best, fastest way to complete your case, then you will also mark 1D2, 1D4, 1D6, and on 1D8, the Family Law Certificate of Assignment that you completed. The rest of this form will be completed by your server. In item number two, they will write the address, complete address, um, street, city, state, zip, where they served the respondent. On number 3A, the date and time they served the respondent. The server will also complete number four and five on page two. They will put their name, address, and telephone number, 4B, if they are not a registered California process server, and number five, that they declare under penalty of perjury this information is true and correct. They will date, print, and sign, and then give this back to you to be filed with the court. If you have questions, you absolutely want to have your paperwork reviewed by FLF or an attorney or someone else prior to filing. You will then file your paperwork with the court, the original plus two copies. Once you receive your copies back, you will serve a filed copy of your divorce paperwork along with the blank responsive forms to the other party. So for example, if you serve a summons, petition, and certificate of assignment, 
it will be served with a blank response. If you serve a summons, petition, certificate of assignment, UCCJEA, and disclosure forms, it will include a blank response, a blank UCCJEA, and blank disclosure forms. Once your spouse is served, you will file the completed proof of service of summons with the court. If your spouse has not filed a response at the end of the 30 days, submit a request for assistance to complete your judgment and finalize your divorce. If your spouse files a response, you can still resolve your case by agreement. If you do not have an agreement, the court will determine when to schedule a trial date. People who do not have minor children from this marriage have completed this workshop. The FL 105, Declaration Under Uniform Child Custody, Jurisdiction, and Enforcement Act, UCCJEA. Again, the top portion of the form in the caption is the same as all of the others. You will write the name, date, place of birth, and address where the children have lived for the past five years in section number three. Number three, enter the number of children, and then begin by entering information about your oldest child first. Attach an FL-105A for cases with more than two minor children. You will note that on 3B and C or D, if you have more than two children, if the children have always lived together, then you can check the box under the name that says residence information is the same as given above for child A, and you only need to enter the address information for the oldest child in A. You will enter the date that you moved into your current residence or the children moved into their current residence rather, the person that the child lives with, their address and the relationship. So in this example, the children moved into their current residence in June of 2017 and they are living with the mother. Prior to that, from August 2015 to June of 2017, it says San Diego, California. That is because after the first box, you only need the city and the state, not the complete address. And again, the child lived with the mother. And then lastly, from birth to August 2015, the child was living in Chico, California, and lived with both parents. And that is why both parents are listed and under relationship, it says parents. On page two, number four, it's asking if you have ever participated as a party or a witness in any other court case or custody proceeding involving the children. So this would include family cases, guardianship cases, child support cases. You would mark the proceeding, the case number if you have it, the court, the court order, the name of the child or children, your connection to the case, and the case status. If you are unsure about this, FLS staff can look this up for you. If you have never participated in another case, regarding your children, then you would mark number four and no, and leave those boxes blank. For number five, if there is a restraining order in effect, you must enter information about the county and state where it was filed, the case number, and the date when the order expires. This can be a criminal restraining order, a family restraining order, a juvenile restraining order, or other. Again, you would provide the county, California, if, if out of state, the appropriate state, the case number, and when those restraining orders expire. If the restraining orders are no longer in effect, you would leave this section. On number six, check yes or no if any person claims to have physical custody or visitation rights with the children in this case. If you don't know of anybody other than the parents who are claiming any rights, you would mark no, and then simply date, print your name, and sign at the bottom. If there is a third party that is claiming some rights to custody or visitation, then you would mark yes and enter their information. Thank you for attending this workshop. For additional assistance, please visit the court website www.sdcourt.ca.gov, click on Family and then Self-Help Services to submit a request for assistance or schedule a video chat. This is particularly important prior to filing if you have additional questions on any of the forms, but especially the disclosure forms. Thank you so much. Take care.